Welcome to Ocenta Stories, recorded in bedrooms, living rooms, closets, and balconies in quarantine around the world. In each short standalone piece, artists, writers, creators, podcasters, and more answer the question, what do you want to hear when this pandemic is over? I'm your host this week, Chiara Santella. Before we begin, I'd like to recommend a brand new show from Studio Ocenta and Tracks on PRX, Cultureverse. It's a show that brings myths and legends alive in the modern world and inspires listeners to learn more about the cultures that surround them. Hosted by Kelly Marie Tran and Yara Shahidi. For more information about the project, check out ochentastudio.com slash cultureverse and subscribe to Cultureverse wherever you get your podcast. And now, on with the show. This week's episode is a daydreaming journey about post-pandemic freedom. The story was written at the beginning of the pandemic in March 2020 when everyone was starting to experience isolation and reclusion. It comes to us from Cuba and has been produced in English and Spanish. And now, with no further ado, To Swim to Dream by Ernesto J. Gomez Figueredo. Being born on an island generates an involuntary and complex relationship with the sea. It's a captivating endless thing, the ocean. These days of confinement have made me think a lot about the sea, how close it is, and yet so far. Even though I can still see it, the shore seems further away in time. It's a feeling that unites us all in the world right now, We all feel like we're being held captive on an island, dreaming of what's beyond the horizon. As a child, I went to live in a small town in central Cuba, called Hatibonico, many, many, many miles away from the coast. It was so far away, we could only dream of it. So, when I was six years old, I became obsessed with the sea. I can't remember what sparked that curiosity, but I can recall that all of a sudden. It was all I could think about. I want to know everything about it. I begged my parents to take me, but they always say no. One day, I heard about a man who knew a woman who had seen the sea. I found out that this man lived right next to the childhood nursery it was in. So I decided to go for my destiny, but I have to be patient and wait till everyone was asleep. As usual, Auntie Alicia was all fierce. That night, I woke up my best friends, Veronica, Billy, and Pedro. Together, we were invincible. The grown-ups called us the Musketeers. Every true adventure begins when heart, joy, and reason follow dreams by the roads of the strange, hoping to find answers. We snook out, passing the kitchen where the cooks were still gossiping, past the security guard, and finally through the hole in the fence to the other side. Everything seemed so huge out there. We wandered down lonely alleys until an old man caught our attention. The man was wearing sad clothes and his face was stained a grayish blue. He looked at us through thick round glasses, like someone lost in the distance. Do you know where the woman who once saw the sea from afar lives? I asked. The man did not respond with such authority that he could do nothing but laugh. You want to know what the sea is? These kids today, replied the old man with a smile. This was no ordinary grown-up thought. An ordinary grown-up would have forced us to go back the way we came. But the old man saw perhaps something in our hopeful eyes that made him want to help us. So, He took us to see her on his bicycle, 
Pedro and Pili sat on the back basket, and Veronica and me sat up front. With the wine of the road in our little faces and behind our backs, we were going into the unknown. And then everything stops suddenly. I see her as soon as my eyes follow her. I know she is the woman who had once seen the sea. She was different from everyone I had ever known in my short life. She was a daydreamer. My little heart was beating so fast. We could see the sea on her face, hear the sounds of the ocean through her voice. She was watered in flowers in a garden when we arrived. The men greeted her from afar and said, Here I leave you with these little ones, who wants you to talk to them about the sea. We say nothing for a while. We were so nervous. How do you feel when you are so close to something you have imaginated for a long time? How do you feel when the horizon before you gets closer and closer and finally within reach? All of a sudden, a screen of terror rang out behind us. It was Auntie Alicia screaming all words that were forbidding to us towards. That wonderful man who was leading us to the truth. I could hear Auntie Alicia coming towards us, but I couldn't see her. I was dreaming, dreaming of the sea. The sea was real, and I already knew it. I want to leave it now. But little by little, I was separated from that beautiful face that, surprise, observed the scene. We never did get to speak with her. I'll be honest, I'd cry, I cry a lot. If anything remains fixed in my memory, it is that I closed my eyes and shoot it so much on the way back that people were scared to see us go by. That night, I slept at home, safe and sound. When we returned to the nursery the next day, it was no longer Aunt Alicia who welcomed us to the door, but another woman. They closed the hole in the fence and separated me forever from my adventures. After that day, I learned that the woman who had seen the sea from afar was not the only one in the village. I discovered other people who had also seen the great blue pain. The baker, Arzola, and his wife, Ophelia, and countless others. For a while, I thought my own mother had the same look as the woman who once saw the sea from afar. But it would go away when we walked down the village streets and when she hugged my father, and when she said to my grandmother that she loved her. Come to think of it, she only really looked like that when she was reading. Some time passed, and we talk about it less and less. But one day, she told me that the sea was like the flag about the schoolhouse that goes up and down at different times of the day. She say it was dangerous, but beautiful, and when you talk about it, your mouth tastes salty. I didn't know what to say. She continued, I knew it well. In fact, once, I live on its shores and in its depths. It turns out my mother comes from the sea. She had to leave that realm and she could never tell me why. All I know is she promised never to think about it again. The day I finally saw the sea, I thought of the good old men, 
of the woman he led me to meet and I thought about my mom. That day I wasn't as happy as I had imagined. The sea is just water. I had been imagining what that sublime moment would be like for as long as I could remember. From then on, I got used to thinking about life and death. It's strange, because children don't know anything about death, but many years later I understood that to be dead is a lot like not believing in the sea and its magic. My childhood dreams went up in flames in the five seconds that my gaze landed on the horizon. The reality was too simple. It lost its wonder. I felt dead. Today I see the immense sea in front of me every morning, reminding me that I am its prisoner. The sea surrounds me now during this lockdown. Its image makes me think of freedom, so out of reach. When the lockdown is over, I'm going to go to the coast. I'm going to listen the sound of the waves more closely. I will feel the breeze of the ocean and I will learn to live once again. To Swim to Dream by Ernesto J. Gomez Figueredo in Spanish. Nacer en una isla genera una involuntaria y compleja relación con el mar, pues a la vez que provee y salva, te cautiva. Estos días de confinamiento me han hecho pensar mucho en el mar, en lo cerca que está y al mismo tiempo tan inalcanzable. Es un sentimiento que nos une a todos en el mundo, precisamente por la sensación de estar cautivo dentro de una isla. Me separaron del mar sin ni siquiera haberlo conocido. Me llevaron lejos de él, hacia un pequeño pueblo al centro del país llamado Jatibonico, donde ninguna frontera toca el océano. Cuando tenía seis años, se manifestó en mí una idea fija, conocer el mar. Recuerdo que de repente era en lo único que podía pensar. En una ocasión, me presentaron al niño más grande que jamás había visto. Él afirmaba conocer a una persona que sabía dónde vivía una mujer que había visto de lejos el mar. Cuando tuve la oportunidad, emprendí la titánica tarea de escaparme por las altas rejas del círculo infantil municipal llamado Pequeños Cosmonautas, pues cerca de allí el extraño señor arreglaba esos aparatos en los que vive el fuego que año después aprendí que se llamaban fosforeras. Al principio, como era de esperar, tuve miedo. Tendría que guardar a la hora de dormir, después de nuestro tiempo de jugar. Entre tanto, y mientras todos dormían, desperté a mis mosqueteros, Verónica, Pili y Pedro. Juntos éramos invencibles. Éramos llamados así por los vecinos, por las travesuras propias de un niño. Toda verdadera aventura comienza cuando el corazón, la alegría y la razón siguen a los sueños por las calzadas de lo extraño, con la esperanza de encontrar algunas respuestas a sus inquietudes más profundas. Todo estaba decidido, nada podría resultar de otra manera la que habíamos planeado por mucho tiempo en lo que duraba el almuerzo. Como de costumbre, la tía Alicia quedó rendida mucho antes que los niños, algo que hacía nuestra misión mucho más sencilla. Como de costumbre, Burlamos primero a las cocineras que murmuraban sobre que la hija de alguien del pueblo estaba embarazada, luego al guardia del huerto y después al agujero de la cerca que nos dividía del mundo. Era todo muy grande. Éramos cuatro pequeñitos despojando lo desconocido, 
con la pasión de grandes conquistadores.